everyone. I'm here to talk to you about the pen testing process and don't do crimes. Um, uh, you heard from previous speakers, both Simon and Joanna. You heard a lot about hacking in New Zealand and uh, different jobs that Joanna has uh, been doing um, in her journey into security and Simon's journey into security. And I also have a journey into security uh, that I will share with you. Um, but one of the, jo the job that I have at the moment is uh, I am a penetration tester. Um, I specialize in web application security. Um, but that's because of my background, which I'm going to tell you about. And next. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I have anxiety. And whenever I um, get into situations like this, anxiety amps up. And I need to talk about myself. Um, so you have to bear with me for a few minutes, because it gets me in the groove so I can deliver a good presentation. So my first computer was a Commodore 64. I got it when I was eight years old. Um, my dad got it for my brother. My brother didn't like it, and I did. Um, I also liked gaming consoles. I started out with an Atari. I only have vague, vague memories of the Atari um, and uh, Super Mario Brothers and all the gaming systems, and had a lot of fun, to, fun with those. And in high school, my math teacher thought I might enjoy the computer programming course that he was starting, and I learned Turbo Pascal. Googled it. It's fun. <laughs> um, but. Um, but I was in high school, and I really loved computer programming, in, and I loved gaming, and I thought that was amazing, and I was going to go to university, so I went to university. But to go to university, I needed to get a job, and I lived in, a, in Maine in the US, and the nearest job was at a ski resort. So I went working at a ski resort, found out that I could make a living snowboarding, and went snowboarding for the rest of my life. Um, so, but I did that for about 15 years. Um, I did leave university at the time. I started snowboarding. I went to Colorado, did a lot of time, a lot of work in Colorado, both coaching, training, competing, and got into mountain biking, and decided to travel back and forth to New Zealand and have an endless winter. And I did uh, Colorado to New Zealand, met my husband here in New Zealand in the lift line, um, married him, have my family here, lived down in, outside of Christchurch, um, and still continue to snowboard to this day. But when I was in the snowboard industry, I had to work at least three jobs to make ends meet. It doesn't pay very well. It's a great lifestyle. It's an amazing lifestyle. I highly recommend it, uh, unless you have to pay bills. So <laughs> basically, my whole idea, once, once I had a family, once, uh, once I still wanted to travel, I still wanted to do all these things, I just needed more money to do it. So I needed a better job. So I decided to go back to university. And I went to the University of Canterbury for a computer science degree because I knew that I wanted, right, right back from high school, I knew I wanted a job in tech. I knew this is, this is what I wanted to do. So I did the computer science degree. And about halfway through my degree, I mean, a friend of mine and I were chatting. And um, I ended up focusing on software engineering. And I thought I was going to be a software engineer. I was a software engineer. I had an internship as a software engineer. I applied for scholarships and, and ended up winning a Google scholarship, a trip to India and $5,000, um, which they wanted me to spend on education. So I attended KiwiCon on my scholarship. So thank you, Google, for getting me to KiwiCon. And while I was at KiwiCon, I ended, ended up doing the badge challenge. And um, through this whole process, I was really interested in, uh, started to get interested in security because I attended my local information security interest group. And it was really intimidating, but it was about security. So I got a friend of mine to go with me. And uh, both of us showed up. And we walked into a room with 20 other men in black hoodies. And we had just come from work, so we're wearing dresses uh, and looking quite professional. Uh, and it, it was a bit intimidating. But they were super happy to see us there. <laughs> so they came up, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? How are you doing? And this is down in Christchurch, and they also happen to be organizing their first uh, Christchurch hacker conference. And they're like, we'd love to have you there. We'd love to have people from the university. We'd love to um, you know, have a chat with you, all this stuff. So I ended up organizing 25 other uni students to go to the very first Christchurch hacker conference uh, and do an InfoSec 101 course, um, which, was, which was fantastic. And I learned a lot. I learned um, a lot about security. And, and found out this is really, really interesting. And so I had that kind of crew in at KiwiCon that I could kind of rely on. So I wasn't walking into it by myself. I was surrounded by friends. 
And um, when I was doing the batch challenge, the batch challenge was really interesting because I was like, oh, well, you know, here's a QR code. I wonder what that does. I wonder what happens when you do this. Oh, this takes me to a website and looks like a login to a router. Oh, I wonder what we do here. <laughs> and I kept asking those questions. And when I got stuck, I would ask someone else, hey, what do you think you do here? And, and communicated with people. And um, I also learned about this podcast, Risky Business. And I had never heard of it before. Decided that I needed, wanted to know more about security. So when I ended up leaving KiwiCon, going back to Christchurch, my commute in to Christchurch every day is an hour each way because I live in the mountains, because I love the mountains. Uh, so perfect time to listen to podcasts. So I started at podcast one of Risky Business. Uh, there's over 550 podcasts now, I think. Uh, and what it did is it taught me that jargon of security. It taught me about issues. It taught me about what's going on in the world, what went on in the world um, 10 years ago. And it was really fascinating. I also joined Twitter. <laughs> I was not on Twitter previously to, previous to KiwiCon, but I was wondering, like, how do all these people know about security? And it's because they kept hearing about it on Twitter. And Slack channels where I could meet people and you know, discuss um, things that I was doing. And then the badge challenge led to CTFs, so capture, capture the flags. Um, if you have any questions on what I'm saying, we could definitely ask me at the end of this talk. So I pl started playing capture the flag and with friends. So a group of us would be like, uh, yep, we're going to do this capture the flag. Had some people come on and mentor us, and it was amazing. So I would, on Twitter, post about security events going on, post about women in security, about gender diversity and inclusion and things that I thought were important to kind of publicize and get out there. And eventually, someone sent me a DM on Twitter and said, hey, you look like you're interested in security. Do you want a job? And I'm like, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> so I'm now at Lateral Security. Um, and it is a, in Christchurch in Wellington in, in Auckland. And they do a variety of services, but it's all security. Um, Simon talked about it earlier, how it's one of the bespoke security companies here in New Zealand. And because all of my background was in software engineering and building web apps, it makes sense that the, and, and what I enjoy doing is CTFs, it made sense that for the pen I started doing penetration testing for web application security and um, code reviews. So I was lucky enough to work in an environment in software engineering where we did really secure code, uh, and I had I learned a lot of good habits. Uh, so I'm able to bring those over into the security space. So yeah, welcome to security, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it is a lot of information. There's a lot of things going on. You're just like, woohoo, you made it. You're in security. You've got the job. Now what? <laughs> um, but. It's, it's really hard to kind of come down and focus and be like, okay, there's all these aspects of security. What, what, I, I need to get good at everything right away. Like, how do I do that? Um, but having the support around you that, no, you don't have to be good at everything. This is what we hired you for. This is what you're going to focus on. You're going to be provided all the training you need, and we support you in doing this. So what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is, uh, uh, typically for my job, is a pen test. And so companies, uh, and this is according to Wikipedia, uh, companies you know, will get a penetration test for various reasons. Um, but basically, they want to hire someone to attack their system uh, as a criminal would and evaluate their performance, their security performance, and the security of their system. And they want to know what the weaknesses are. And um, they usually have a certain si set of money set aside to do this for various reasons. Um, so we're given time to basically throw what we can at the system and find issues. So in my world, they're like, here's a web application. We've just made this excellent web application, and we want to, um, we want to, sorry, I know I've been talking for more than a minute. Um, we want to have this web application. We want you to test it. Uh, it is, uh, we've, we've had this old desktop software for a while, and we decided we want to open it up to our customers so we can you know, be accessible and, and, and provide better customer service. So we built a web app on top of it. Like, OK, <laughs> thanks. Um, so here you go, Tony. Here's a shiny new web app. Go ahead and test it. And you're just like, oh, really? Um, yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> 
oh, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and and you, you do, you have a web application, you're like, oh, where do I start? Where do I start, okay? Um, it's not really like that. It's more like, here's a web application, and guess what? We have a process that we go through. And when a security company talks to a company that wants your services, we have to set out scope. So we have discussions back and forth on what the agreement phase is, so what we're allowed to touch, right? Like, this is the little box that you're allowed to test. This is it. Um, and to be fair, some companies are like, have at it. Whatever you want, test everything. But then we have to be careful, because it's like, well, are you saying test everything, and yet you have third-party apps that you don't have permission to give testing on? That'll get us in trouble. So it's a lot of back and forth and really tying down in a contractual agreement what that scope is. The next process is once you have that agreement, you have this kind of scope, you need to do, as a, as a pen tester, you need to do planning and reconnaissance. You need to gather as much information as you want. Because uh, it's, you can go in blind, and then it just goes chaos. Um, so you want to stop, and you want to plan out what you're going to do. And you have your testing phase, which you'll go through, and we use some tools. Um, I will say that uh, tools are something that you can learn later on, and really understanding the concept behind them first is a good idea. And you know, the whole point of uh, a pen test is to gain access, to maintain that access, to exploit the program. Um, and what to do with that exploit. And then the biggest kind of piece, what we deliver, is we collect all of that evidence and we send it to the companies in a report. So once we do this, we're going to start with the scope, okay? These are the rules you need to go by. Like the bug bounty that you're going to hear about later, you will have, you know, something that you're allowed to do. This is, this is the scope of what you're going to do on a bug bounty. Same thing in a pen test. This is what you're allowed to do. This is how much time you have to do it. So if I've got four days on a pen test and I don't find anything for the first three days, and I know I still have to write a report about this, and I'm panicking, and then all of a sudden I find some really juicy bug, it's really hard not to just dive in and you know, waste all my reporting time and just you know, try and find as much as I can about this bug. So you have, need, need to have good time management. And then you also want to know if this is a test environment or a production environment. So if I accidentally take down the system, is, how, is this going to affect you? Um, and what is the desired outcome? What does the customer actually want? You, know, you can go ahead and you can find things, um, but if you're actually delivering a report at the end that, that didn't actually cover anything they wanted you to do, that's not valuable to them. Um, so what is that desired outcome? Again, as I said before, are there any third parties that we need to be aware of? Are we going to accidentally commit crimes? Um, not a good idea. And ethics. This is, again, as Simon was talking about, as Joanna was talking about, um, we are only allowed to do what we have permission to do. And we don't go outside of that box. So this is scope. This is crimes, okay? <laughs> Stay in your scope, okay? Um, you, you will see you, um, when you do scanning and stuff um, you're, that you're going to access some stuff that you're like, wait a minute, I don't know if I have permission to do that. So again, this is going into a little more detail. Planning and recon. So when you start an engagement, read the scope, right? Understand what these rules are. Know what your playground is. Set up your notes because you're going to have to document this, and you're going to have to produce a report at the end, and it's really easy to get stuck in a rabbit hole and go and do all these things and then come back you know, two hours later and think, oh, no, I have no idea where, I've, where I found that last bug. And also setting up your environment, right? Basically, in a month, I might work on five or six different engagements at least. Every one of them is a different tech stack. Every one of them is a different setup. So when we start the engagement, we've read the scope, we understand what we're doing. Very first thing is kind of understand what the application, what, the, what it's for. So you know, playing around with it. So if you start a bug bounty and you're on a, you're on a specific uh, website, go through that website. What's the purpose of the website? Do they, do they take customer data? Do they do this, do that? And what does it do? So take down those notes and understand what it does. Look at what you have. Right? Take notes. Um, 
confirm that it's the scope as you understand it. Again, you might find just different IP addresses that are related to the web pages that you're looking at. So you have to confirm, go back and communicate with the customer, oh, did you know you have these? Some of them don't know what they have, so sometimes you have to tell them. And, uh, and ask lots of questions, lots of back and forth questions, um, and take notes. And then pro tip, just stop, all right? Don't just dive into it. Have that plan, make sure you've got your, yourself mapped out. This is that time management skills that we all really need work on. Um, but stop, relax, take a breath, and then have your set plan. So mine is web application security text testing. So it, OWASP has an actual checklist that is yay long, which is why it's not up on the screen. You can look it up on the OWASP website. They have a checklist of security testing and what to kind of go through. But these are the key topics of each of these. And these are things where, as a software engineer, these are all things that you learn because you have to build these things into your web applications. So your identity management and authentication and authorization, um, your, are, you, uh, are you securely um, validating all of your input? Are you giving error messages that tell the user what parameters you're looking for? Um, and you know, testing for weak cryptography. You know, are you sending your username and password in plain text with each request? Not a good idea. Um, and then are there any flaws in the business logic? Um, so going through and kind of how things work uh, and accessing. And then am I actually able to access that database? Am I able to go beyond this web application and go where I shouldn't be able to go? And take notes. Take notes, take notes, take notes, take notes, take notes. Um, again, you, at the end of this, you're going to be writing a report. And um, I think the joke that I always heard about penetration testers were that they just were report monkeys and they just had to write all the time. And, and, <laughs> and basically, for when you're working in the industry and you're working for a company that does uh, many, 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 many penetration tests, you tend to have a template. So it's not as bad as starting from scratch. You definitely go through, but you have to be able to still articulate what you um, find to the customer. And sometimes you need to send them screenshots, and sometimes you need to send them the entire um, explanation of how you access something so that they can re replicate it. So in reporting, the value, the, the customer hires us to provide value, and the value we provide to our customers is to deliver them that information and we want it to be understandable, replicable, and we want to deliver it in a clear and concise you know, solution to help the customer, because that's what we're here for. Everyone that works in security, you ask them, we are here to make people more secure. Yes, we get to hack all day, but in the end, the point is we want to make New Zealanders more secure. So we want to not only say, hey, here's all your problems, <laughs> we also want to say, here's some ways we can work through and fix these things. Um, which is definitely something that is very important. So I will be sharing these slides afterwards, so these will all be live links to all of my resources. Um, but there are a lot of testing methodologies out there. Obviously here in New Zealand we have our own, um, we're follow, we follow, a lot of us follow the OWASP um, testing methodology. Uh, in the US they have uh, the testing um, uh, guidelines. Also. When you're in bug bounties, there's um, certain different companies have different guidelines. You can go to those bug bounties uh, sites to find them. And um, again, for all of these, when you're talking about bug bounties especially, you do have to write your own report. And some companies and some um, organizations like Bug Crowd provide a good template for you to fill in all your information. Again, take notes so you can fill it in easily. And we'll help you to write these reports, but it's an art. You need to get good at them. So that's the penetration test process. All right? So who wants to be a pen tester? <laughs> um, it, is, uh, it is, I can say, it's a really fun job. I love it. It's, uh, it's really amazing, but it's not all this. <laughs> um, definitely, you will spend you know, a few days uh, on, on a project and not quite get anywhere. But then some days, within 30 minutes, you've, found, you've, you've got you know, remote code exec on their system, and you're giving them back the contents of their computer. And <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Um, 
But the things that we're looking for in pen testers are, first up, a passion for security. So there was, uh, Joanna mentioned quite a few things earlier, and you know, if you are attending your local ISIG, um, which is the Information Security Interest Group, or your OWASP groups, um, attending conferences, if you're students, non-waged, non we all offer discounts, um, you have to have empathy for the customer. So if your attitude is, men, people are stupid, <laughs> it's not very helpful. Um, it's more of like, this is how I want to help these people. This is what I want to do. Um, it's not necessarily their fault. They don't, they don't have the knowledge or the skill to, to, to be in a place to be secure. And the hunger to learn more. So although I don't think that, you know, just like with software engineering, I don't think you should be spending 20 hours a week on top of everything else doing just this. But if you already have a passion for it, it's fun. So you get stuck in some nights running CTF contests, you know, till two in the morning, three in the morning, it happens. Um, think outside the box, you know? When you're looking at an application, that whole what happens if I do this question, <laughs> that is very helpful for a penetration tester. And communication. Work on your communication skills, network, get out there, talk to people, talk to people online, you know, get into communities and groups. And Again, if you have a criminal record, you're not going to be working for any security company. So the ethics, if you're in some place that you should not be, um, there, everyone's already given you a couple of ways out, talking to CERT and Zed, and you know, if you're part of these groups, you can talk to them. Say, hey, you know, I accidentally stumbled onto this. What do I do? Let them help you. Whoop. Sorry. So what about skill? <laughs> you got to be good at this, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel that way some days too. So the great thing about skills is there's lots of resources out there, and yes, you have to put the time into it. Um, AccessCyber.org is something I recently came across, and it has a huge laundry list of all, um, um, all different kinds of um, information on security. OWASP.org, uh, again, a huge um, library of information. Careers in Zed, look up Penetration Tester. It's on the skills shortage list. Um, Grace Nolan, who works at, is a security engineer at Google, she uh, wrote her entire study notes to get a security engineering job at Google, and they're on GitHub, so go get that. Uh, Simon Howard's Getting Started in Penetration Testing, it's excellent resource, especially here in New Zealand. Um, Twitter, iSIG, SecTalks, all that stuff. But the biggest thing about penetration testing is you're a researcher and a writer. And it's your job to deliver this information to the clients. So eventually, you will get to the point where you can master this job. <laughs> but you need to put work into it. You need to show your passion for it. You need to get out there. Here's a few of my uh, role models in security. Um, these are uh, high-end security professionals in the world, very well respected. We need more people in security. We need more women in security. Um, we definitely want to talk to you if you're interested so that we can help set you up on a pathway to come and work with us. And that's me, Lateral Security. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Yeah. So the so the question is, we we have a process that we follow, but how much do we time do we spend on each process? Uh, it depends on if we find something. So. Uh, you know, you have an engagement, it is, you know, again, I'll say this again, you'll have an engagement that's four days. You know that you're set up for four days for this, for this. and different, uh, different pen testers have, old have different ways of doing things. So some people might just put an hour a day into reporting and collating their notes and making sure that they've, you know, you know, documented everything. On a daily basis, you need to update your client and let them know where they're at and what's going on and what you're going to do tomorrow or ask them if you can access certain things. Um, so it changes on every single engagement, depending on what the engagement is. Um, but it's, it's a bad habit if you wait till the last half a day of an engagement to write a report. Um, it's painful, so don't do that. <laughs> but, but it is. You kind of you break it up. And again, there will be days where we'll spend three, you know, three days on something and not 
get anything substantial and then hit the jackpot at the end of the third day. And then all of us jumping on it, being like, okay, what else can we do? What else can we do? Right? So um, it, it, it's, it is time management. It's not set in stone. Every engagement is going to be different. Does that answer your question? You get a gold star. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if we don't find anything, um, and I will have to say this, we always find something. Okay. <laughs> we always find something. Um, even if it's just as simple as, hey, you need to update some of your dev development libraries because there's these known vulner vulnerabilities so that people with chain attacks can probably access this. So you always find something. And, um, and there's no 100% secure anything, right? So we, even, even that penetration test, we're limited by scope. So there may be major issues in other part of that application, but we're not allowed to touch it. And we might be like, hey, we noticed this when we were investigating that. But since we're not allowed to touch it, we'll just leave it with you with what you want to do with it. So it's a lot of communication with the customer. Any more questions? Yes? Uh, it's a good question. Um, it's yeah, good question. Is most of what we do uh, test web apps? I'm talking about web apps because that's my specialty because I was a software engineer in web apps and that's my um, wheelhouse. But um, I think it depends. Each, each company here in New Zealand has different specialities um, and all of us can pretty much cover everything. Um, but it's a matter of um, different customers want different things. What I do, I'm, I'm talking about web apps because what's happening now, and a very big trend of what hap what's happening now is um, a lot of uh, kind of legacy programs and systems are having a web app just slapped over the top of them so that, ev so that customers can access it easily online. Um, and so a lot of the testing that we do are actually seeing, well, does that web app actually expose your internal network, you know, um, which is things that the web application developers might not have worked on. And I will say, if you're interested in security, it will make you a better developer. Um, that was the biggest find um, for me as, as a software engineer, was because I was interested in security, I, was, I could say, hey, that doesn't look right. I don't think we should be doing this. So definitely, just because you're a software engineer doesn't mean you shouldn't be thinking about security all the time. Does that answer your question? Anyone else? Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. Um